enough with that. <laughs> Welcome to story hour. <laughs> I'm totally joking. Um, I write poetry. Welcome to my channel. Um, like and subscribe um, if you get anything out of this. Um, I'm doing this channel because I absolutely love writing. I write often. I write every day. But poetry is kind of one of those creative art forms I've always gone back to. Throughout my life, um, you could find me writing poetry. So some of the poetry that I animate and place on this channel, some of it is actually really, really, really old. Um, and I want to share it with you. Um, I started off putting up my animation, uh, putting up my poetry and animating it versus talking because I am awkward. <laughs> I am awkward on camera, but at this point I am prepared to get over it. Like I want to get over it. Else, if you noticed in my credits, I would get someone else to read my poetry. Um, cause I didn't even like the sound of my own voice. Um, even though she sounds exactly like me cause we're related. <laughs> Um, but she was just, it's just, she sounded better, I think, to me. I don't know. So, ultimately, and I was like, I gotta do this. I just gotta bite the bullet and, like, just read my stuff myself. So, this is my first attempt at getting really personal with it. I still will be animating my videos because I love the animation process. Through this, I've learned so many software. No. What else? I have several different softwares that I use, so that'll be a later discussion. I definitely want to um, elaborate on that and show people how to really animate. Um, but for this channel, I definitely will be animating my videos, but I am going to start reading them as well. Like, I want to sit down and um, give you my voice. Uh, I want you to understand, like, why I wrote it and, like, what the meaning is and... Um, hopefully you don't need this to understand the meaning and all that sort of thing, but I definitely want to, I feel like I'm not giving backstory, I'm not giving people an opportunity. I definitely want people to give me topics and things to write about. Sometimes my imagination is limited to the world that I live in, but um, true growth might come from getting some perspective from you, getting some poetry topics from you. I definitely want to learn how to write songs. So, um, you know, maybe that can be something I branch off into. But if you have anything, and, and listen, when I say give me a topic to write about, I really mean almost anything. I have a poetry about glitter shoes. Glitter shoes, think about that. <laughs> And it's kind of good, actually. Um, sometimes I write poetry based off of words. I might literally get the word in my head tree. And then an entire poem. I have one poem that I'm working on right now. I'm not working on the poem. The poem is complete. Um, I have one poem that I'm working on the animation to. And the poem is Breakdown. The poem came from literally one word, which is breakdown, and an entire poem came from it. So, get in the comments, um, tell me some topics or some words or some great funny things that I could write a whole poem about. I hope in the future to even tape my writing process. Um, that would be really interesting. We'll see how that goes. But this is a for, let's see. What are we reading? Today I'm reading to you The Neighbors. So let me tell you a little bit about The Neighbors poem. The Neighbors poem came from social media, believe it or not. Um, I think it came from the perspective of the others. We think of the people on the other side of the picture as being so far removed from us. Um, we like, they're the unattainable. But the reality is, most of these people are just like you. Um, their bodies may be just like yours, but they photoshopped. Um, their actual size clothes may be the same as yours. Um, once they strip away all the clothes, they look a lot like you. Um, 
but we see these airbrush images and this goes for celebrity as well I think they all come out in their gowns and they look all made up and perfect and perfect um, and the reality is they're getting you know cheated on and they go bankrupt and they overspend just to keep up with the Joneses they do a lot of the same things that we do but we for some reason glamorize their life um, and it's not for some reason we can all get, break down all the reasons why we do this but the reality is we view them as the other and so I brought the other into a smaller box sometimes the other can be a neighbor um, but it becomes weird on that level, right? If I told you that I was gazing at um, Beyonce all day, you'd be like, yeah, that's great. Beyonce's so great. But if I told you that I was gazing at my rich neighbor, you'd be like, why? It, that'd be weird. But the reality is, Beyonce could be living the same lifestyle as my rich neighbor. The difference between Beyonce and my neighbor is that my Beyonce has more of a fan following. But that the idea of looking over the fence at someone shouldn't be weird or isn't weird or isn't different because one is famous than the other. And I and I and I I wanted to show that on a smaller scale. Again, if I told you I was looking at my neighbor's pictures of my neighbors all day, you'd think that was weird. But you would sit and watch a celebrity all day and not think that was weird? I think it's weird. <laughs> um, so that's what the neighbors um, brings into perspective, that the people on the other side of the fence are just people. And um, I hope that you can catch the kind of the reference that there's actually um, they're not living this glamorous life over on the other side of the fence. All of that glamour was all in the watcher's head. Um, and, uh, so anyway, let's read the poem. <laughs> Never mind the noise they make. They're probably just having a party. The screaming and shouting is likely them cheering. I envy the sounds that I'm hearing. I can see it now all gathered round as the piano man serenades the crowd. A far cry from where I lie, they have a reason for being loud. I can only dream of how excited they must have been to be invited, for this invite proclaims relevance reignited, and no one with a name would have been slighted. I imagine invitations in Boston Gold and clearly state that dinner will start promptly at eight and everyone rushed to save the date. The neighbor's guests are all wearing formal attire, gowns from various boutiques. The men are all draped in custom suits, cause each form is unique. There were no new cars in the driveway. Ostentatious people only attend if there's valet, and my neighbors being of like mind would have it no other way. I imagine there's red wine everywhere, Yes, that would explain the soil trash. Crimson wine spilled from their cups as they cheered and their glasses clashed. The neighbors never invite me. Perhaps they think I'm no fun. Relaxed clothes are telling. Protective styling means my hair is wrapped in a bun. Ah, basic attire of a married artist who is still raising two sons. I never see my neighbors outside despite knowing their home. But their grass is always perfectly mowed. There's even a garden gnome. I once tried to catch a glimpse of their faces, but the wife always wears dark glasses. Perhaps she's a singer, no movie star, humbly shying from the masses. Ah, the life of an actress. And the man of the house surely values his spouse, only taking business calls in his car, keeping his voice at a moderate pace so his kids won't experience that scar. For this and so many reasons, that man deserves a cigar. Now I know you may see this as envy and my behavior very bizarre, but how much time do you spend gazing at the stars, wishing you could be anywhere than the place you currently are? Hours consume liking the pics of those relegated to merely dimly lit earth stars. But all the stars left behind peace of mind, something you shouldn't discard. For what may be an illusion, as you see in my conclusion, there is a cop in my neighbor's front yard. 
so the person watching um, from the other side of the fence made it all up. You know, you hear glasses, you, you hear screaming. That can be whatever you want it to be. You see a celebrity in a pic smiling. What does it actually mean? You made that all up. So, um, it's the same thing. Hers just sounds a little weirder, a little more weird, um, because no one does it. So no one really thinks about, um, envying their neighbor, which is actually not true. People do envy their neighbor. Hmm. They do. So... Um, but again, on a large scale, if I told you that I envied my neighbor, you'd think I was weird or, you know, you'd question that. But if I told you I envied Beyonce or some other celebrity, I don't know, I don't actually watch a lot of television, but if I told you I envied another celebrity, you'd be like, me too. So why is one weird and the other one not? Whatever. So that's the neighbors. Um, and this is the video. If you like my channel, um, pl please think about uh, liking and subscribing. I greatly appreciate that. And it is my intent to put out poetry at least once a week. I've been doing kind of okay with that. Um, I think I kind of slowed down a bit there, but um, my full intent is to put out poetry every week. And I also would like to get to a point where um, I'm writing poetry here with you. Maybe we could write songs together again. That's something that I wanted to explore a bit more. So, and um, I also write short stories and things like that. So I'm really excited about that. Anyway, here's the video, the animated version of The Neighbors. Never mind the noise they make, they're probably just having a party. The screaming and shouting is likely them cheering, I envy the sounds that I'm hearing. I can see it now, all gathered round, as the piano man serenades the crowd. A far cry from where I lie, they have a reason for being loud. I can only dream of how excited they must have been to be invited, for this invite proclaims relevance reignited and no one with a name would have been slighted. I imagine the invitations embossed in gold and clearly state that dinner will start promptly at 8 and everyone rush to save the date. The neighbor's guests are all wearing formal attire, gowns from various boutiques. The men are draped in custom suits because each form is unique. There were no new cars in the driveway, ostentations people only attend if there's valet, and my neighbors being of like mind would have it no other way. I imagine there's red wine everywhere, yes, that would explain the soul trash. The crimson wine spilled from their cups as they cheered and glasses clashed. The neighbors never invite me, perhaps they think I'm no fun. 
Relaxed clothes are telling, and protective styling means my hair is wrapped in a bun. The basic attire of a married artist who is still raising two sons. I never see my neighbors outside, despite knowing their home, but their grass is always perfectly mowed, there's even a garden on. I once tried to catch a glimpse of their faces, but the wife always wears dark glasses. Perhaps she is a singer, no movie star, humbly shying away from the masses. Ah, the life of an actress. And the man of the house surely values his spouse, only taking business calls in his car, keeping his voice at a moderate pace so his kids won't experience that scar. For this and so many reasons, this man deserves a cigar. Now you may see this as envy, and my behavior very bizarre, but how much time do you spend gazing at the stars? Wish you could be anywhere than the place you currently are, hours consumed like in pics of those relegated to merely dimly lit earth stars. But all the stars left behind peace of mind, something you shouldn't discard, for what may be an illusion as you see in my conclusion, there's a cop in my neighbor's front yard. Thank you.